G'day YouTubers, welcome back to Brewpeg, story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition boat. We get some paint on the floor, finally. We sandblast and rust kill the studio, and we finish the locker, but before then we had to fit it, trim it and paint it. Spin around here to go first. And it fits ish. That's amazing. Jeez, it's a huge storage space. It's fucking big, isn't it? She's back down on the ground. We've got some lines to cut. So you can sort of see these black lines that go off on an angle on each. Um, shelf. We need to trim those out and that to, that's to give us some clearance to make the bed. The bed sort of sits in this corner here. We didn't necessarily know exactly how far in the bed was going to protrude until we'd built this thing, stuck it in and then started doing the bed measurements themselves. So now that we know where it all is, we've just got to trim those off. So we're going to scale saw these and we're going to, we've got a little reciprocating saw thing. We're going to buzz the corners down because I'm not confident we can get the scale saw right down on the edge. But by doing that, we're also going to lose quite a bit of strength in this area here. So I consulted a structural engineer. Trev came up with the brilliant idea of using some fibreglass to strengthen that side. Something Damon and me wouldn't have thought about at all. We're so used to steel. Two layers on each. Hopefully that's enough reason. Oh, that's awesome. You're cutting after? Yeah, because cool. I won't have the strength if I cut it for, I think. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. You need a thin bottom sort of stick. You want me to put it? You don't have to stick your hands in it. You want me to put the epoxy on as well? Could you? <laughs> How many coats are you going to do? Um, I'll do two layers of glass. Probably about time to well, just put the jug on. Boat, but it's held together by fiberglass. <laughs> <laughs> and adhesive. A step up from sticker, sticker maybe? <laughs> Should I go and put the jug on? Yeah, we won't be long, we'll only be a few minutes, I'd say. The last time I did any fibreglassing was probably 25 years ago, so going deep into my memory bank, threw a bit of epoxy on first, then our fibreglass tape, and then doused it with epoxy and patted it in again to make sure that we had no air bubbles. Something like that? Yep. That's awesome. I think of you. Alright, here we go. It's probably going to be a bit of an awkward one, isn't it?
So we're actually getting some progress on this platform. So I've been corrected in some of my terminology. The bearers are the two beams that go underneath. So they are sitting down there quite lovely. And then we've got this heavy structural ply that we're putting on top. And there's a gap at the back. You can see that gap all the way along there. And that's our gap that we're leaving so that we can have water drain, but we can also have all of our utilities and everything go across there. And then the cupboards themselves sit um, right to the edge, this front edge here where just down in this area here. So, slowly getting there. Michelle and Richard will recognise this coastline. This is Begara out on the east coast of Australia here. To paint the galley floor, Damon and I had to get off the boat for three nights. We found a cheap little unit out here on the coast. Early morning and after work, we'd go back to the boat and do the editing and work through the day in the little unit. Every night we did a coat, every morning we did another coat, and it worked really well. We weren't exposed to the toxic paint. There were some comments about Damien staring at a high chair. I just want to confirm it wasn't the high chair Damien was staring at, it was this. Okay, today you're going to see a masterclass in how to paint when the sun has gone down and you need to smash some coverage out. One. This paint has a weird mixing ratio of three and a half to one. There we have it. Floor. Lovely and two packed up. So first coat. Um, tomorrow we're going to arrive first thing. As you can see outside it's quite dark. Tomorrow we're going to arrive first thing and we're going to get stuck in and do another coat straight away. Um, and then we'll get off the boat for the day because this stuff's pretty smelly. But that's really awesome. This is a monumental day for us. We've been waiting six years to change the color of this floor properly. And we've finally done it. So I ran out of paint right in this area here, but everywhere else has a coat of paint over it. Well, at least two actually. So with those layers on, they're gonna bond really well. Chemical bonding means basically the two layers sort of etch into each other, bite into each other, I suppose you could say. And they, the chemicals bond together. Um, the first layer is still soft enough that it allows the second layer to bite into it. So it's the best possible join that you'll get between two layers. Way better than sanding. Sanding's good. The chemical bonding is much better. Early morning, birds are singing. Uh, what I wanted to show you was this. If you can see. <laughs> you see all the flies? <laughs> 
Maybe for them this is food or something. They were very attracted to it last night. I did it. So this morning I'm doing a light coat. I'm using the 240 grit just to just to kind of rough up the surface ready for a painting. But we need to do some filling. So we're going to fill these things here. It's just that wood's cheap wood so sometimes when you cut it rips as you go along. Uh, mostly it was okay but this just this end wasn't so great. So I'll fill that and then come back this evening and uh, sand the last little bit of filler off and then do the white paint over top. So it'll look pretty uniform once we're once we've done that. Now because the outside is in the against the wall, I don't need to really worry about it too much. I'll just take the the livestock off. <laughs> um, but I'll I'll focus on this area here making sure that it's level, it's nice. <laughs> time to start fairing. I started putting a little bit of goop on and this is the goop that we use. It's a epoxy based two pack fairing compound. Um, you've got a pretty good working time with this stuff. It's probably, I don't know, you get a decent 15 to 20 minutes with it before it starts to do anything and then after about 30 minutes you can actually start smoothing it out with water. Put a bit of water on your finger and start smoothing everything out. It saves about 90% of sanding time. Um, but this does take a while to dry hard so it's probably six or seven hour hardening time. Um, but it is absolutely rock hard when it dries, so it's a really beautiful um, fairing compound to use. following who's come in at this stage might not be aware of that. We often get questions. <laughs> yes we do. Looks a little bit untidy now. It'll look beautiful when we finish though. I know. Just about to do some sanding. Get these so that they're nice and dry.
the next morning. So this top coat's come up really nice. Um, it's quite a thin paint, so you can sort of see there's patches and all sorts of stuff where you can just clearly see through it on that wall where there's gray floor, it's much the same. Some areas are dark, some are light. Um, that's to be expected with this paint, it's miles. Oh yeah, the cat's back by the way. She's been gone for a month. Um, it's to be expected with this paint. It's uh, really quite a thin paint. It's not not far off water compared to um, the original etch that we're using. This is Jodomastic 90, this grey that we were using. Um, the yellow on the floor here is actually a wattle product. It's the first time I've ever used it. It is. Oh, there we go. Blanked out the name. U400, I think it was from memory. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty similar to any other polyurethanes. I've used Jotun polyurethanes a few times and they all feel very, very similar. So we'll crack on, we'll get a second coat in here. And while upstairs this is happening, we need to carry on with this one. So what we need to do now is radius all the corners so you can sort of see there's basically gaps, you know, whether there's a slight join or whatever that needs to be filled in. That's all gotta be radius. So we'll go through and, and do all of that now and then we can start. Uh, putting the next two to three layers of top coat on this one. Right, so I've gone through, you can sort of see that line of white on the cream paint. That's a sealant. Um, pretty straightforward, just basically run a bead down and then run my finger over it and get a nice radius. It doesn't have to be absolutely the same radius everywhere because by the time we cover this with paint, it's all going to look basically one piece. It comes up beautiful. Right, that is two coats now of Sensual Cream. Not sure if we're gonna to need to do a third. Um, we'll do a bit of a check, we'll come back this afternoon and check it, but it's pretty sort of even in terms of coloring and things like that. Um, I don't necessarily know if we need to do it for thickness, but we'll just see how we go. We'll come back and we'll do a bit of a check this afternoon. But that's looking pretty close to done. The paint that we're using for this is a paint by Norglass. It's a self-leveling polyurethane. It's a linear polyurethane. Um, it's not like normal polyurethanes. It doesn't stink as much, which is a really nice um, side effect, but it also flows absolutely phenomenal. Um, better than any other paint I've ever used. Um, but you can sort of see I've tipped this and it's, it's, it will come up basically a mirror finish. It's just the most amazing paint. Turns an average painter like myself into an absolute genius. There is a small amount of fog in this room, but blasting away, what I wanted to do along this edge of the wall, you can sort of see there's like crinkly bits of rubbish um, on the bottom of the paint. It's like the paint, it's like there's rust beneath the paint. I don't know if there's rust beneath the paint, but I think there might be. So I've just gone in and had a bit of a blast, and you can sort of see that black like spot. That's basically rust. So I kind of confirmed the theory. I need to go along and blast sort of six inches right away along that bottom of that um, vertical wall. What it rust? Yeah, I think it is, eh? Oh, really? Yeah. So um, I just have to go, I'll go and do that wall now because that's kind of the bit that I really needed to know about in this it room. It's lovely though, it comes up, comes up good, eh? Yeah. So inside the room, we're going to start at the door and just work our way in, basically push on, eventually finishing up in that corner there, so we'll do a big loop. Um, so sort of, in here, probably the around the front, and then we'll go back to the bedside.
So we've gone through maybe three lots of uh, sand in the like sand pots. So each one's about 30 litres. So we've got through about 90 litres of sand all up. And that kind of gives you an idea of the area that's been covered. Um, we've dug pretty hard into this sort of edge right the way along here um, because there was rust. You know, you can see it as like little black dots and things like that. So here's a good example, right? Floor rust. It is surface rust, but it doesn't take long to get it straight back to being lovely white metal. Um, we just have to basically take the time and go through it and rip it all off. We were hoping to be able to just sort of sand a lot of this floor, like lift the sandblaster back and actually just scuff the surface and paint over, but there's no way we're going to be able to do that and not have the floor fail. So this floor is going down to bare steel as well. Taking this room down to steel, it does add quite a bit of time to the process, but it has to be done. Um, if we don't do it, it's just going to fail. There's no way around that. So um, we have to just get stuck in, dry the sand that we need, sieve the sand that we need and blast. One of the things that's really time consuming on a job like this is safety gear. So cleaning it, cleaning it out after you've done a blast, getting it on, getting it off. So time to start sanding. So I'm going to go through and just 120 that um, and just take it down to a nice smooth finish. Jess is probably taking it down 80% um, and she's buggered her hands so I'm just going to finish the last bit and then we'll start getting some paint onto those horizontal surfaces. I want to show you this right. So this is coated in epoxy. See all this white fluffy stuff that's coming off as I sand it comes off rather than a dust it's coming off as sort of lumps like this white stuff. That's what basically happens with epoxy. It um, can be a bit of a pain to sand the first couple of times because it, it doesn't set uh, rock hard like a polyurethane. It sort of can be a wee bit sticky um, which is a bit of a challenge. Um, you just got to keep basically clearing off your paper and what I find is uh, I didn't mean to do that. What I find is you'll often end up with, there's none on here at the moment, but you'll often end up with little dots of um, epoxy sort of jammed into the paper. This ceramic um, paper is pretty good. It doesn't do it as often as, it, as other types. Um, but what I normally do is actually just get a brush, or generally a stiff brush, like a wire brush, give it a quick scrape, scrape and it keeps the paper good to go. Um, it lasts sort of three or four times longer if you do that. Injured poor. We were moving something this morning and uh, my hand got jammed 
And of course, when you've got a condition like mine, you know, you don't just sort of have a little bruising, everything sort of around the, the site of the injury sort of starts to pull, so my lungs sore, blah, 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 my arms sore. So what do you do? So I'm off sandblasting now, <laughs> Dame's got to do it all. But we're halfway through, which is really great. In case you're wondering, this is the mask I'm using when I'm blasting. It gives you an idea of how much visibility I've got. So, not a lot. sandblasted the steel you can kind of see the stainless that we chopped up and did all sorts of stuff and welded it in that's what it comes up like there's another piece that we sealed off that was the old bit we took out welded up and then finally a new filler pipe um, nicely fitted in and blasted up you can kind of see how nice those welds come up when they've got a sandblast over top This is the first step to getting the cabin back to normal. <laughs> yeah. We've just got to finish blasting the last next bits door. of the room next door on the, on the deck, yeah. and then. This is the first painting. step of this is the first step of assembling the boat back together, <laughs> which is. is a nice step. It is. I've had a crazy idea. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of storage in that space just there. Do you mean the insulation space, That's, so that we don't freeze to death? Yeah, but what if it was, like, the cupboard was the insulation, do you know what I mean? Like, there was one, the, the insulation was against that, and then the cupboard itself is inside. I'm just saying, it's like, it's a lot of... Yeah, it is. Sp yeah. Like, from the one side of the cabin to the other, it's a lot of space, and you could have just, like, a little opening thing. I don't know if you can see that on camera. How much would you say, like, well, no. 15... Centimeters, like 150 mil. Yeah, probably about that much. I haven't got a tape, but yeah, probably about that much. Yeah, and if we can do insulation to the 60, yeah, which is the first layer of insulation for us. This is an outside um, bulkhead. Actually, I just had a thought: how we can get more room without 
compromising on the insulation, we could use a better insulation. So yeah, just on that one strip. We could use, if we had to, we could use aerogel just on that one strip. Yeah. Which only has to be 10 mil thick to be super. Aerogel insulated. is the nicer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll it's try the nicer insulation <laughs> and see how it compares. Okay. <laughs> but. I'm just thinking it's awesome. Even if it's just cubbies cut yeah, in, yeah. and you can just store stuff in there, that, that's, that's a huge space, really. That did that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to think in terms of every little nook and cranny for the mm. storage, really. Yeah, let me think about that. I, sh I, I should be able to design. It's probably too hard to go below the rib line. No, no, I'm saying you have the up to, up the, rib, to the ribs. Yeah. To there. Yeah. It's it's small mil. and it's thin, but you could fit a lot of socks yeah, yeah. in there. No, you could. Yeah, no, that works fine. Yeah, that's easy. All right, done. Yeah. Crack floor! Right, let's finish the rest of the boat. Like even blacker. After it sat for a day, sort of thing, I think it got really quite full on. Like, look down here. See this black shit? See this black stuff just down in there? Wow. That, it was, the whole floor was covered in it. Amazing, eh? That's weird. That's really weird. It is really weird. I think that's the black stuff we were seeing under the paint. I, I think it might be like a rust kill type thing. But there's rust underneath it, right? Not really. No, it was black. It looked like it had been sanded. But wouldn't you be able to take that off with the blaster? Yeah, but the only but rust kills water soluble. So I'm thinking I took it off with the blaster and then it went into a solution in the water again and then turned black because rust kill goes black when you put it on. Right, okay. That's why like I mean I don't know what it is, I'm just guessing, but that's my Crazy. guess. <laughs> We've gone through and given this floor a good sweep. There's no surface rubbish or anything on there to deal with. Now we just got to get in and rust kill it. So we'll go out, let that go off, uh, come back, and we'll be able to throw another layer down. Some of this will turn up to be a little bit rusty once some of the rust kill sort of runs away from it. It's very watery, so it'll, it'll run downhill. You can already see down in this area here, it's getting a wee bit light on. Um, but yeah, that's all good. We'll go, go through and do a second coat and get all of those bits later.